everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Yeah, these boys ready to get it in over these people, man. They ain't they ain't doing no joking because, like I say, the boy D, he was serious and he had he had some dudes that's gonna back his hand is serious. And your boy R, he got some people gonna back his hands too because they invested. You know, they invested when it comes down to 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 them drugs. Like I say, in prison, man, it's no game. You know, dudes dudes lose their life over them drugs. They lose their life over not paying bills that they owe for drugs. You know, they ended up getting sent up out there on helicopters, getting, you know, uh, colostomy bags on this, all of that. They people are serious about that money in there when it comes to them drugs, and them dudes are serious about getting high. You know, so, man, you throw in the, the mix of some, some people involved as well. Man, you talking about a, a deadly game, man. So, you know, the police come up in there, they break everything up, man, see what's going on, ask what I mean, any, any problems in here. And, you know, of course, everybody going to say, no. Nah. Everybody gonna say ain't nobody got no problems. Everything good, you know. We talking. We, you know, we had a cipher. You know, we just kicking it. You know, yeah. All right, okay. Well, we 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 watching. We got the eyes on y'all, man. Everybody better be, you know, chill up in here. Oh, everything good. Everything good. But the bar was already understood. The line has already been drawn. Dudes already know what time it is. You know. So you you know you can you can see all back up in there screaming on 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 the people selling them. You know don't. Don't have nobody in my cell no more. He better I never come back to the cell. I better I never catch you talking to him. La, 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 la. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So everybody know what's going on. So when the doors, we go in the lock and we come back out. When the doors come over, man, you know, everybody walking around, everybody moving funny. Now, when you've been in the penitentiary, <laughs> you know, you can, you can see these moves. You understand what's going on. Dudes is getting ready. Dudes getting strapped. Dudes getting them Bethlehems out the hiding places. Dudes is, you know... They getting ready for war, more or less. They getting ready to get it in. You know what I'm saying? If it comes down to that, but you know, they I guess they getting ready. You know, like I say, you stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So dudes is getting prepared because you could tell by the little moves is being made. So now the tension has even gotten higher, and it ain't nothing like being in that penitentiary or being in a block or on that yard or anywhere in prison where you can feel and smell, you know. Danger, you know, is omnipresent. You know, cause everybody now the the tone in the block has gotten lower. You know, it ain't as much noise. It ain't as much chatter because dudes is aware. Dudes is paying attention on what's going on because they feel like something gonna pop off. So dudes is 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 on high alert. You know, normally when you got dudes out there, they playing cards, you know, they playing dominoes, dudes working out, dudes is talking about a bunch of foolishness, dudes talking about this over here, over there, dudes might be over in the corner gambling, but when it's tension in there and it's danger, you know, floating, everybody's a little less into what they doing, they more into what's going on around because dudes don't want to get caught up. No, nobody want to be something going down to you. You know, you 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 stumble into it, or you end up being a part of it indirectly, and you don't know you're part of. Dude may come at you because he know you roll with such and such and such and such and him beef. You know, he know you roll with such and such and such and such is involved in this. So they don't know if if they do something to him, whether you gonna have some re they gonna have some repercussions behind you. So when stuff like that go on, man, you got to be on high alert. You got to always be aware of what's going on around you because. Like I say, you could be indirectly involved and not even know it. So they beefing, man, you know, and it's understood. So now when they out and everybody moving around, man, everybody just walking around mean mugging each other and ain't no more talking. The talking has already been done. So this go on for real, for real, for probably about two days, maybe three. I can't remember exactly. Where everybody moving around, everybody funny. There's a lot of whispering going on. Dudes is crowded up, boom, boom, boom. So you know that something is brewing. You know, dude ain't even, uh, he went to work the next day. But after that, he didn't go to work. He, he stayed back because I guess he figured something going to pop off. And he the ring leader of the stuff. He don't want his boys to end up getting in no beef or getting in nothing that, that's really directly about him. You know, but his main objective is he trying to, he not trying to go to jail. That's that's understood. He definitely won't, don't want to go to jail because 
if it can blow over, he trying to let it blow over. But at the same time, he still got to stand his ground because if he don't stand his ground, then more drama coming later on behind the situation. More people might try to take the board. More people might try to lean on him to try to see if they can get, you know, can get the sack, get the, get the package, you know. So he got the, you know, it's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. You trying to hold on to something that takes uh, violence to hold on to, but you don't want to really be in no violence because then you're going to lose it anyway. So it's a double-edged sword. You see what I'm saying? Now, Louise is the key uh, component in this whole situation. And they in the cell. They stand in the cell. Can't even really talk or voice their opinion. You see, you see what I'm saying? So it's crazy. But I can remember, man, when the thing, you know, really was coming to a head. And uh, they just walking around in the block, man. And I remember a dude came out. And he went to the ice machine, right? But he brought Louise out, too. So Louise going to the microwave. So when Louise at the microwave, he at the ice machine, old boy pulled up over there, D, and said something to Louise. So when he had the ice machine, he see it, he comes straight over there. He said, what's up? What's up, man? What's up? What, what, what you got to say to them? So Louise is right there, standing right there, looking scared to death. And dude was like, man, I say what I want to who I want. I told you that already. You know, so then the weed like, no, no pilot, no pilot, no, no, no. He's like, get out of the way. What you mean? What I mean, what you say? He said, man, look, I'm boom, take off on him, punch him dead in his stuff. So when he punched him in his face, old boy stumbled back, dropped a little ice and everything, and he he pulled that Bethlehem out. He pulled it out, showing up. Dude pulled his out. And then he reached in the other side and pull out the uh sock. But at this time on the block, you know what I'm saying, on, on Greensville, we had pool tables. At one time, we had pool tables, fools, balls, and all this. But this is one of the reasons why we end up ain't having pool tables for too long because dudes start using them as weapons. Pool, pool balls, pool sticks, and everything. Once, you know, a couple of incidents popped off and people got hurt, that was it. They took, they took that stuff up out of there. You know what I'm saying? So he... Pull out the joint, and then he got he got the uh he got the pool ball in the, in his sock, and he got the Bethlehem. So now they they faking and pump faking at each other like they trying to get it in. You know what I'm saying? Then his boys come running out. Then his boys come running out. Dudes is grabbing pool sticks, pool balls. I mean, it's going down here, man. It, the only thing you can do when you see something like this going on is you know make sure you can see everything around you and make sure if anything come near you then and you got that Bethlehem on you where you can go ahead on and do what you got to do even though you ain't got nothing to do with the situation when chaos and confusion go on like this you know some dudes take that opportunity to try to get at you that always wanted to get at you because they know everything else going on and that's where the focus going to be so you always got to be on point when these type of situations pop off you got to be ready for whatever you know, so like I say, when this don't pop off, man, and they standing there trying to get at each other, but dude can't really get to him because he got that he got that lock in his that uh, pool ball in the sock, and, and, and he swing that joint and hit you upside your head, and you go down, and you know he got that Bethlehem in his hand, then you might lose your life. You know what I'm saying? You you might be out of here, so you ain't gonna be too quick to charge on that. So they they pump faking and screaming at each other, and and you got Louise over here hollering, no, 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 no trouble, no trouble. You know what I'm saying? And they they going. Then the dudes, his homeboys, they grab pool sticks and they running up on each other, pop, clucking each other with the pool stick. Dudes got the Bethlehem. Dudes getting poked and bagging up, and then breaking pool sticks and try. I mean, they going down and they, they turn the joint up. The lady in the booth that noticed the joint, she done hit the code, she done called the people. I'm talking about, this is like a movie scene when you look out in the block, you see dudes out here rumbling, fighting, poking, swinging pool balls, throwing pool balls. I seen one dude, he threw the pool ball, hit the dude in the face, man. And I'm talking about he hit him, it looked like dead in the eye. Block him! And I'm talking about as soon as it hit him, he just went straight down, man, fell out. He was out unconscious just from one pool ball. You know what I'm saying? He got lucky though, cause dude ain't run up on him and do nothing to him. He turned around and started rumbling with some another dude that was this in the melee. But he was unconscious just from one pool ball strike. And then, like I say, when you were in prison, I guess when you were in any fight, if you go down and you go unconscious, man, anything can happen to you. So that was his situation. He just fell straight out. He the pool ball took him out. Man, them dudes was in there fighting. I seen dudes over in the corner. They just rumbling with their hands. Dudes lifting each other up, slamming them on the ground, punching dudes in the face. 
all of this going on all over <laughs> Louise. All of this is going on over Louise. Dudes getting stabbed, dudes getting their head bust open, dudes getting hit with pool balls, pool sticks, and the police come running up in there. First, when they came in there, they came like six, seven deep, and then they see what the melee was. It's like a mini riot up in here. So they stopping at the door, calling more people. So I guess they getting their rag gear on and getting their little hammers, their little Ninja Turtle suits, what we used to call them. They try to get in there, but they blowing the whistle. Blue, blue, everybody to your cell. Everybody go to your cell. So everybody who's not involved, supposed to be, you know, making your way to your cell, going to your cell. Dudes is frightened, they ain't paying no mind to that. <laughs> <laughs> they trying to survive, they trying to rumble, they trying to do what they do. They already know they caught, they stuck. You see what I'm saying? So, man, they just blowing the whistle. Bleep, bleep, go to your cell, go to your cell. Click, 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 click. All the doors start opening up. That's a sign to tell everybody, go to your cell. You're supposed to be in your cell. You know what I'm saying? This is getting ready to be a situation, which is already is a situation. So, man, dudes will start moving in their cell. I'm moving the minds. I'm sitting out here just looking at all the stuff. I mean, and they still fighting. They still rumbling. Dudes chasing the dude around the pool uh, pool table with the with the pool stick, with the, 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 the big end of it because it's broke off, you know, swinging at him. Walk up, walk up, and trying to catch him, hit him with the pool stick. Dudes is still on the floor tussling with each other. The two main dudes, D and R, they still standing right there. I think I think D ended up getting poked a little bit on the arm, but he done clucked dude a couple of times with the pool ball. So that, it's crazy. Louisa ran to the cell. <laughs> Louisa ran to the cell. When the people say lock up, Louisa went in the cell and get the door closed. So man, it, it just was chaos, man. Pure chaos. This situation right here. We on one unit. This situation right here shut the whole compound down. Shut the whole compound down because by the time the ride gear people get in there and run in there and start grabbing people, you know, hitting people with the little nice sticks, you know, running up on them with the shields, get everybody subdued, everybody laid down on the ground, you know, uh, face down on their stomach, cuffed up. Dudes is bleeding, they get medical to come up in here, medical coming up in here, taking some dudes out on the stretch. Old boy got hit with that pool ball. He 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 was he was bust up. They take him up out there on the stretch, his whole Adam swelled up, looked like went from getting hit with a pool ball to his eyes swelling up, looking like a baseball or a softball. You know, so they taking people out on the zone and they going around there from cell to cell, checking every cell, making sure there nobody else involved, making sure they got everybody else that was involved. They got the person in the booth standing there pointing people out, people who might have got away, slid to their cell. They said, I'll get him. He was involved too. Woo, woo, woo. So it was a whole bunch of, you know, pure just chaos, you know. And I know it may sound super crazy to y'all, but... This penitentiary life, you know what I'm saying? Things like these pop off sometimes, you know. You have a dude that got a beef, another dude got a beef, no matter what it may be about. But he got homies and he got homies. And it's even more so like that now in prison because you got these gangs, you know what I'm saying? And you ain't going to fight no one gang, remember? I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> it ain't You ain't going to fight no one gang, remember? If you not a gang member, you not going to fight no one gang, member. You going to fight a mob of gang members. So... This probably going on even more so in prison there than this. This was way back in the 90s, you know, like the early 90s, you know what I'm saying, when this situation popped off. So they come in there, man, they get everybody, man, it takes a minute, man, hours and stuff to get all of this stuff subdued. We stuck behind the cell. That's it. You know, we're going on lock. We on lockdown, you know, when you on lockdown, they got to bring the food around to feed you. Food going to be late anyway now because of th this situation getting cleaned up. So we ain't going to get, I think it's probably going to be dinner time or something. We ain't going to get that till, you know, dinner usually probably at 5. We probably ain't going to get that now at about 7.30, 8 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Because now they got to change their whole plans to what they made in the child hall to put it in cots, put them on trays, take them to every block. But like I say, this situation shut the whole compound down because... They consider, they use situations like that to consider like it's a riot or mini riot or a potential riot situation because they're going to say that they don't know everybody that was involved. They got to try to find out, investigate, get everybody who was involved so they can make sure that, you know, the situation is safe for when everybody come back out. So that may take God knows how long, you know what I'm saying? And they don't have a clue because they ain't. All they talk about is investigating. They ain't doing nothing but looking for somebody to tell something. It ain't no investigation. You just look for somebody to tell. That's the only way you're going to find out. 
But that's what they do. But like I say, they have to bring officers from other shifts and other posts to come over to help get the situation controlled. So they'll use that excuse to shut down the other compounds. Because like I say, it's three and one. They had to pull all some over there. So they go on lock. They go on lock. So now the whole compound mad about the whole Louise situation because everybody got to go on lock for a situation that they ain't got nothing to do with. But they do that the administration to send the message of, if y'all do this, y'all will be punished. And that's the subliminal message they want to send to try to keep people from doing it. They also to try to get other people to police other people. They want you to say, man, y'all, man, when they see a beef, they want you to say, man, y'all, no, man, y'all go ahead and squat. Because they know dudes might got something going on and dudes might try to squash it because dudes don't want to go on lock to lose what they got going on. So that's the message that they try to send when they try to punish everybody for what some people do. But other people get the other message. Be like, man, if I'm going to get punished for it, I might as well be involved. If I'm going right, to, man, I'm, man, I ain't do nothing. I'm going on lock for nothing. I'm, I'm going to do. So it's, it's, it's tricky when you do that. Yeah, they do that all over the system, man. Try to punish everybody when something real serious happens because it's a subliminal message that they're trying to send to the compound that we ain't going to tolerate this or we don't want no more of this because they're not even capable of handling those type of situations. When you got mass dudes involved, anything over five, ten dudes involved, they ain't really prepared for that. They will tell you they are and they will act like they are, but they not because they don't really have the numbers. And then by the time they do get the numbers, whatever... Uh, incident that popped off it done already done transpired or it done transpired to the point where dudes done did what they wanted to do or did what they felt like they had to do so by the end it's always the aftermath that they're getting to it's always the aftermath when they get there by the time they got there dudes and got their head bust open dudes and got stabbed dudes and got hit with pool balls so you really ain't do nothing and then when you come in and you when your first uh front line come and they see what's going on, they don't even engage because they scared. They waiting for the other people to come with the gear on and stuff like that. They ain't running up in there, man, when they see pool balls flying and being swung around and, and Bethlehem's being poked at each other, man. They ain't running up on that stuff. And that's the message that I tell all y'all young fellas out there. And ain't nobody going to save you in prison but you. But you. So if you're not capable, then, again, prison is not for you. Is not for, I don't think personally this is for nobody. It definitely won't for me, but I just was forced into the situation. You know what I'm saying? Because of choices that I made. The choices, the bad choices that I made on the street put me in this environment, put me in here. So I can't do nothing but survive and go with whatever comes with it. But, it, you know, I made the mistake of messing up to get there. See, while you out here on the street, you don't even have to do that. You can make better choices while you out here instead of making the choices that I made. Because once you in it, you in it. You know what I'm saying? Once you in it, you in it. And you can get to the point where you in there and you can say, oh, I'm trying to get on. I'm get moved off here. They crazy over this side. I'm trying to go to another. Yeah, you ain't going nowhere. And then when you do go somewhere, you're going to find out wherever you go. It's the same thing going on everywhere. It's prison. It's prison. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, the situation, man, it got, it got real ugly, man. And dudes got hurt real bad. You know what I'm saying? Dudes, all of them went to jail. Everybody locked up. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. They come back and even got two more dudes that they thought was involved. They really was, but they never really got to the physical part. But just because they was on, on both sides, they came back and got them, locked them up. Investigation. You see what I'm saying? So, situation got super ugly, man. And um, dudes really got busted up over that joint. I'm talking about hurt. Real hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I got to go to the hospital hurt. That type of situation. So it was a crazy, crazy scene, man. We ended up staying on lock probably, man, the better part of, of, of almost two weeks, you know, two weeks compound on lock, all because of this one person, this one little Colombian boy that everybody that was in that game wanted and everybody that was in the drug game wanted them to stay out there. You see what I'm saying? So it was crazy, man. And I remember all of them got locked up. And this is the crazy part about it. They locked Louise up on protective custody for probably about maybe a month in PC and let them back out because they couldn't hold them back there because they wasn't directly involved in that. They didn't hurt nobody. They didn't push no knife. They didn't fight nobody. So they got put back out on the compound. But while they put back out on the compound, old boy still locked up. Old boy, they wanted to get him still locked up. So now guess what happened? Mm. 
all the wolves is back out. So the situation got a potential to start all over again because now everybody that's in there and trying to get drugs, now they know the dude probably don't come back out. And if he do, he ain't coming over here where you at. You know what I'm saying? So now everybody trying to get Louise. All of them trying to get him because they want the plug. They want the drugs. They, they know their brother bringing them drugs in. You know what I'm saying? By now, everybody know. I don't know why the administration ain't know. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they did, but then, like I say, you know, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna it's gonna be hard to catch a homosexual with them drugs because, like I say, they gon' they gonna hide it where they, ain't, where they where they can't look at. You see what I'm saying? So it's crazy, man. But they let them right back out on the yard, and they used to go over there every day, man. It was crazy. Every day they used to go out on the yard, and, and oh yeah, but they put them in the cell by itself. I don't know if they had it like that for permanent or whatever, but they put them in the cell by itself. So he had a single cell. And you, you know, dudes used to be going, try to holler at him, holler. He ain't come back in my block. This is what I know though from other from you know what was said from the other block that he was in. Dude stayed at his door all day, like a rotating door, trying to holler him because he stayed in the cell most day till they called wreck. But when they called wreck, he come out and go out on the yard and go to the fence. Yeah, he go to the fence because on Greensville, like I say, back in the day, if you go out on a certain yard, you can go to the fence and look like 120, 120 yards over is segregation. And if dudes that's in segregation, if they on that backside to face the yard, they can look out of their little window and see the yard, see people coming out on the yard. Then you got that's a good eyesight <laughs> to not to, to pinpoint who's who. But you can look out the window and see the yard. Also, we got a little small, you know, window part like here that you can open and let air in. So dudes will get to the side and yell out there and holler the people out on the yard. And dudes is standing over on the fence, close to the fence, be right there trying to hear you and listen to you or whatever amongst all the noise of everybody out there on the yard. Now, I used to be out there jogging and jogging and stuff. Back, back then, I was still training and fighting and stuff. So I used to be jogging and jogging. So I used to see them come out there and go to the fence and hollering over there and yelling at him and you can hear his faint voice coming back. Yeah, yeah, da, da, da. What was that, man? You know, and it was crazy, but that was the dynamic. That's what was going on, you know. Now, he that's the first time I heard and knew what the word Tiamo mean because he used to be hollering, Tiamo, 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 daddy, Tiamo. So I knew that, you know what I'm saying, I heard when the Spanish dude told me that means I love you or whatever. But it was just crazy. He hollered the same thing back. But while he out there, you know, dudes is coming back and forth while he on the fence pulling up on him. Look, let me holler at you. And, you know, you can hear him holler, no, get away from him. He all right. Don't talk to him, shawty. Don't talk to him. And he's like, no, no, I thought to him. I thought to him. I thought to him. No talking, no talking. You know, so dudes are still like, holler, let me lay down, holler, let me lay down. And you hear some dudes throw him the middle finger up there and everything, man. It's crazy. He trying to hold on to the people from way in segregation. They out there on the yards with all the wolves, but he happy because they put him in a single cell. I guess they put him in a single cell because they know in some way, form, or fashion that all of the stuff jumped off over him. He's going to really have to, to request to be put in the cell with somebody else like he's been discriminated against. If not, until that happens, they're going to leave him in the cell by himself. So he's going to be cool. He's going to be safe. Ain't nobody in the cell with him. But... That ain't stop these dudes. These dudes want them drugs. These dudes want them. So they still going to be coming at them no matter what. And, you know, like I say, he back there worried to death probably, you know, worrying about what's going to happen to him, who they going to end up with. He hollering out there. I was going by one time. I'm, I'm, I'm Yeah, I'm going to come out there. I'll be out. I'll be out. I'm saying to myself, yeah, I like to see that. I don't, I don't know how you coming back out here with all that food that just went down. Plus, even if you do, they not going to put you, you know what I'm saying, over here where they at. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm thinking. But, like I say, the people, they ended up staying out there, man, I don't know, a couple of weeks, I guess. And then, you know, he kept telling them to go to jail. Go to jail. Tell them to put you in there. You scared? Because he wanted them to come back there with him so he could feel more secure. They back there locked in the cell, and he know ain't nothing happening to him or whatever, whatever. And whatever type of whatever they're going to try to work out to try to get back out there together or get somewhere else together that they can do. So eventually, I guess they just went to the people and told them they want to go to jail. They ended up going to jail. 
So they back there with them, whatever. I don't know if they put them on the same block or whatever, whatever. After that, they out of my sight. I don't know. Everything else is just talk. But they, that situation right there was just crazy. It was just one amongst many. The, you know, to go go on in there on a regular basis, man, to be them wars over power, money, boys, and drugs. It just goes down. It's just a part of prison, you know. And hopefully when you're in there, you won't get caught up in it or be around that situation because, like I say, you're going to pay directly or indirectly anyway because they say we went on lock. You know, uh, we had to go through all them changes for things that we ain't had nothing to do with. But that's just how it is because that's the message that they're going to send to try to stop things from like this from happening in the future. You see what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, a lot of dudes got messed up in that situation. A lot of dudes got hurt in that situation, man. A lot of them, you know, all over one person and trying to get control over that one person. And no one, none of them benefited. None of them benefited from it after that situation because all of them lost. And that's what prison is about, losing. You lose when you go in there, you're going to lose while you're in there, and you're going to be losing every day you're in there. You're going to be losing your life, you're going to be losing your time. Time, most valuable commodity on earth, is just slowly sliding away. And all these things is, is, is uh, unretrievable. You can't get them back. You can't get them back. But, you know, that was a crazy situation, man, where it popped off all over the board because the boy was not only a boy, he was actually the plug to all the drugs. And that put him in high demand. <coughs> high demand. And um, that's how it went down. I don't know. I think I know. I remember hearing something about, you know, Louise got out, but it was on the other side of the yard. I think R got shipped. I know D ended up getting shipped because I ran into him on another compound later on down the line. But I heard, you know, uh, I don't know the whole details, so that's why I can't really tell that story. But I heard like years later, not even years, probably about one or two years later, even the other side that they end up was on, some other stuff popped off, you know, same similar situation about Louise. You know, dudes trying to get them and dudes trying to take control of the situation. I remember later on down the line as well, when I got to Powhatan, right, the state farm, Louise had been there. Wreck shop there. Dudes had got hurt, poked up, stabbed up over Louise on Power 10 as well. So by the time I got there, they had already been through there and already had all of that happen and, I, and, 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 and was gone by the time I got there. But I heard about it, you know what I'm saying? Because I remember when I first, yeah, they had a little uh, Colombian boy on here was was getting the drug, man, dude, we killing each other over the boy, woo, woo, woo. So they, evidently this was happening everywhere they was going. You know, it was happening everywhere they was going. And like I told you, things like that happened. Situations like that happened at the time I'm on there. Like I said, they, they had one on there that, that a dude was trying to control with, you know, the, the big breasts, the butt implants, all of that stuff. And dudes be, they wolves, they coming, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the closest thing to a woman that they actually can have access to. You know what I'm saying? Actually have access to. I can remember when I was there, when the one that I'm talking about in particular, you know, on Power Town, I told you they got the big showers. I can remember, I can remember being in the big shower and won't nobody in there. And I just finished working out, so I'm in there and I'm getting out. I think I said that on one of my stories before, and I'm washing up and everything, and then the door busts open, so I look, see who coming in, and it's them trying to come get in the shower while there ain't that many people in there. I said, oh no. Oh no, hold on, hold on a minute. Let me let me dry off. I'm getting up. Oh, hey, Brandon, you know my anyway. Well, I'm, I, let me get out here first. You know, I dry it on up and pew, I got on up out there. I don't want to see it, I don't want to be around it. You know what I'm saying? So you walk around with real breasts in, in prison and stuff. And this person used to try to wear long johns and a wife beater tied up in a knot out on the out on the pod. And they used to, you know, and dudes wear long johns out there and, and white beaters out there, especially, you know, in summertime or whatever, walking around in the block with that on Power 10 at the time. But when they come out there with it on and, and with the fake butt and, and the breasts and everything hanging all out, man, the police would say, man, you got to go, come on, you got to go to go to the cell, go change clothes, change clothes. So they ended up putting, uh, writing it up, writing it up, saying that it's discrimination, you know what I'm saying? So they had made them stop doing it, but why did I guess the paperwork went through and they say, you know, if it's good for them, it's good for them. So had their ears all the time there, out there like that, 
walking around the block, you know, and dudes is doing what they do. But, you know, like I say, that's that's prison. That's a part of prison, man. So, you know, like I say, anything that, that's a part of prison, you're going to have to deal with, like I say, one way or another if you're in there. The only way you're not if you don't even ever get in that situation. And that's why I tell these stories to let y'all know what's going on in there, to let you know what you're going to be facing on a regular basis, to let you know what you're going to have to get through, what you're going to have to endure, what you're going to have to see, what you're going to have to witness, what you may have to participate in. So you need to know these things while you out here in this free world, man, still got this good old freedom on you. <laughs> Don't give it up because it ain't nothing great on the other side. I can promise you that. So uh, stick it out, brother. Stick it out. Anyway, man, I just wanted to drop this story on y'all because it was fresh in my mind. I hope y'all got something out of it. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope y'all share it. I hope if there's any uh, message in there that you could use, that you use it and then pass it on, man. Uh, like I say, we on the road to 100K and we trying to get this message out here to everybody possible. I appreciate all y'all out there. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. Um, like I say, man, it's, it's a blessing in every lesson. And in this lesson, man, the blessing is that you ain't had to experience these type of things that I had to experience. There's a lot of things that I had to experience that I wish I didn't have to experience. But that was the... Uh, Decisions that I made in life to put me in a situation where I had to go forward. I had to keep going forward. And these things came up, so I had to get through them and keep on going. And I, I feel blessed, man. I feel blessed to come through a lot of situations that I came through in prison, man, that didn't leave me in prison. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, I feel blessed to be able to come out here and share this knowledge, man, and this information and my experiences with other people that it may help. So everybody out there who write me any type of message any type of comment and let me know that this stuff touched you or moved you or made you look at things a little different. Anything that I ever said, man, I appreciate you all, man, because I try to read all the messages. So like I always tell y'all, man, talk to me, I talk back. You know what I'm saying? So like I say, the blessing in this is you can get the story from me. You ain't got to get it yourself. So y'all stay out here, stay free, keep grinding, man. Find something you like to do, lock down on it, become the best at it, and all your dreams will come true. Y'all stay safe out there. Be smart and make good decisions. Appreciate you out there. Salute TBP. We out here. Boop, boop. Ooh, wee. Let me try that again. Bam. Ah, salute. Duck that hook. The bank is special. Yeah. Pure delicious. Pure delicious. My name is, uh, Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.